So I'm here again with Kyle with the Walling yeah. Company and Zoom Painting. Yes. Is there any other of your companies that I should mention? <laughs> There's a bunch. They can check them out. <laughs> cool. Be yeah. sure to check them out on Instagram. He's trying to get to 10,000, 100,000. 100,000 like is where I want to go, but 10,000 is the first milestone. So. All right. You're almost there now. So yeah. that's cool. Um, we're going to talk today about growing a small business or medium business very quickly. Yeah. You have some insight into that. You've grown a couple businesses very quickly in the past yeah. couple years here. Um, so maybe tell us a little bit about your latest success with growing a business quickly before we get in on how to do it. Yeah, definitely. So uh, most recent success um, with my painting company, we started a new division. So we went into a more um, residential focus of residential multifamilies and things like that. Uh, tech driven, you know, really branded. So yep. explosive growth. So um, it, it was incredible. We're now, you know, within the top five in that marketplace within a year. Um, so wow. that was it maybe even higher it's hard to quantify yeah. uh, with private companies but in the residential painting sector for Calgary uh, zoom painting is definitely a big name and that was just a, a rebrand of a division um, which was quite successful um, I've also built uh, CIC developments uh, and uh, which is our developing end that was explosive growth um, you know did big contracts and uh, and many more really but my current focus are those two awesome yeah cool so maybe tell us a little bit about how you did that and then how entrepreneurs can apply those principles to their own businesses in a general sense i guess yeah so the key to my success on that was identifying a marketplace uh that i was good at so <laughs> first figure out what you're really good at yeah. uh, then identify who if there's a market for it and then exploit what you're good at trying to chase larger and larger. So I'm a firm believer uh, on large capital. Okay. So the amount of work and resources it takes to do a small painting job, for instance, if I'm going to paint your home and it always ends up costing more than you expect. So yeah. say I'm doing an average paint job somewhere between two and five thousand yeah. dollars. I could solicit um, exterior stucco two story homes just demographically in the city that were built in a certain time. And then now that puts my average job cost into the uh, $12,000 range. So the nine to 12,000. So the amount, same amount of work, just a little bit more research identifying mm -hmm. and then marketing, I'm just marketing towards, you know, what, what I want to, uh, what I want to close on. So that then can be applied again, what we did with that. Well, so now we identified that an interior residential painting is this much, then an exterior stucco large project is this much. Well, what's, where could we go next? Then it was, you know, a residential new home construction house. So typically somewhere around, um, you know, eight to $15,000 uh, on, a, on a large scale. And then I was like, well, where, where can I find more of these houses so then the next progression was you know multifamily so we'll we'll do, do these mid-rise or low-rise buildings so now we've got 12 or 24 or 48 um you know apartment complexes in one area mm -hmm. uh, then it went from there and it was like well what can we do now that we know our primary offering what what's bigger and then the next biggest thing was then high rises so now we're in vertical multifamily i call it so high rises, and now we went from you know being 48 units to being 448 units. Right. Yeah. So, and then that's that's it. How much work does it take? Same amount to to sell 448 units <laughs> as to sell one. Yeah. Maybe less. Really? I would say less. Yeah. Because if I'm going to do all these small projects throughout the city, I'm going to spend resources, time, estimating, uh, drive times, commuting, start, stop. Uh, when you have like a large capital project, you're, you're there, you're, you're committed to the same place. Your start stop time is all set up there. You only did one estimate. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's much easier. So I'm a, I'm a large capital business to business salesperson. We do B2C for marketing because mm -hmm. it pays for itself. Uh, but business to business is where I've seen my success. So obviously one of the hard parts about that kind of growth is getting your service in front of the right people. Yeah. 
So how do you go about doing that? So one of the keys to that is the cold call. So most business comes from cold call, unless you're born into a high uh, important family or, mm -hmm. or you have some sort of uh, connections that uh, maybe you're coming from a different industry and moving into, which is great. Um, but there is, uh, we've, we've identified a way to, to, to really perform a great cold call. We do the research into the company we find out the project that we want, mm -hmm. then we research the company that has it, then we research their core mission, their values, then we see how our core mission values can align, then we go through our past projects to see what align with, with that, with their mission values and, and the, the type of work. Then we go through their LinkedIn, other hierarchies, whatever it may be, to find the decision maker. Okay. Then we call into the office ask for the decision maker uh -huh. not asking like can we be on your bid list or can we be on the tender they put <clears> us through <throat> then we let them know who we are what we did in the past talk about how our core missions align ask to simply have their email address we send them a package and we have you know a high you know 90 to 100 percent success rate right wow. so at least to getting to tender then from that point um then it's it's just based on building on, on trust, uh, your competence, your level of understanding and, and your pricing. So in this construction world. So what so, do you mean by uh, getting to tender? So uh, there's a gate, there is a gatekeeper that is basically has the projects, they have their preferred trades and uh, people that are gonna work on the project. When a project is being built, mm -hmm. um, they will then send this the plans out to different people, which is called the tendering process or um, uh, there's there's quite a few different names in, in different industries that you may be in but in ours it's tender uh, and then once the tender goes out those are the only people that are allowed to bid on it so no one can pass out a tender you have to be invited so Very yeah cool. so there's tendering lists for everybody okay so yeah so projects don't just happen you gotta be in their good books so fascinating yeah it's very cool yeah so and there's tendering with all sorts of uh, private companies, you would contact them directly. Um, then if you want to go through tips for the government, um, it would be Merck's is one for Canada. Um, and then I think the potentially the job bank, .gc.ca, I think they have some. And then there's, there's other tendering companies that you can go through. So um, yeah, there's all sorts of ways to, to get uh, this information, but we wow. saw our success through this, you know, dedication to, uh, to alignment research and, uh, and then the cold call. <laughs> totally. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So let's take uh, a bit of a spin on it here and look at potentially implementing, implementing that quick growth into a different business and, uh, challenge you here and put you on the spot. Yeah. If you, what about say like a restaurant or a coffee shop, how would you implement that kind of growth in like a, B to, or a B2C business that's very like walk-in traffic heavy, yeah. something like totally polar opposite of what you're doing. Exactly, so if, if you had the perfect situation where you get to plan your business before, yeah. um, I would start thinking about, you know, what is the skill set that I have, like that, that my restaurant is gonna offer, you know, what is its unique offering? Right. Then once I know its unique offering, its offer proposition, then I would then think about demographically where is the best, um, you know, uh, amount of whatever it would be. So Uber Eats and uh, the other companies that have done that have changed the game, right? So once you had to have foot traffic, now you can have um, a presence online. Right. So therefore, you can have a, a lower priced lease and have and be going through Uber Eats and things and and you don't need that foot traffic so now you're having savings there that you can invest into marketing or things like that so once you know your your core offering what you're going to have then you need to identify how am i going to sell this is this going to be foot traffic that's walking through mm -hmm. or is this going to be some sort of like supply and demand thing uh, that would be like web-based or whatever it would be once i know that then i can identify my location uh, and then i can start forming my my marketing uh, around so you can grill a market all through that um it depends how hyper targeted you want to get mm -hmm. so um yeah i can keep going <laughs> cool but yeah um so so say you have a very broad potential audience like you're like a um a restaurant similar to say earl's or something like that yeah 
what do you think like in a in a for growth for a business like that because they won't have a super niche target like relatively everyone would eat at a restaurant like that. so yeah so they have more of a niche target than you would know about so if i was to say earls i would be like okay so I, i've got my two points a day i've got my lunch traffic mm -hmm. and then i've got my dinner traffic right. uh, and then i've got really my weekend traffic so i've got three points so i would identify okay so my lunch traffic is core businesses right so now what i would do is i would create some sort of incentive campaign uh, for businesses to come and check it out to get hooked right because they want to host a meeting they want to do whatever it would be so I'd be giving discounts or I'd be going to the local businesses everything everyone within a certain demographic telling them we exist and why we align with with being a great fit for them to hold their meetings and comping them stuff uh, secondary uh, talking about the evening then I'd be uh, targeting whatever it might be for residential living so the evening during the week is probably the people that are living close to it so then I would look at, uh, you know, is, is there any way to align with like the Starbucks? Is there any way to align with the gyms or any of the things like that to then talk about my core offering uh, or marketing material? And then if I was to do the weekend, uh, then I would, I would think about what do I have to offer that's unique to get people in? Where's my value proposition? Mm -hmm. uh, once I could come up with something interesting as a value proposition, then, then I would know where to market that. But on the weekend with a new restaurant I'd, I'd have to think about what it is so theming is getting really big in restaurants now that's what separates them apart you're seeing that with the prohibitions restaurants or bars and yeah. things like that so yeah Very that's cool. how that's how i do earls yeah. <laughs> yeah all right yeah awesome i think there's some really valuable insights there that can really help people grow their businesses because yeah. a lot of people don't even look at like their value proposition or anything like that right yeah so. exactly so most people think that it's a saturated market uh if i go there then i will be successful mm -hmm. right so if i have affordable food even if i have the best food i've got the best tasting food and i'm going to open a restaurant and put it out there that it, it doesn't matter yeah. you know a great idea is is a great idea it's execution right that, yeah. that really leads to the success it's like when people make a website they think okay I've, I've got a business i'm gonna make a website and then i'm gonna have business a web a website isn't actually for business a website is a trust or reinforcement tool therefore when you meet somebody mm -hmm. and they want to look you up they can find a form of trust yeah so business is based on multiple points of trust yeah so and those are reinforcement for a sale um, websites, uh, business cards, image where that those aren't really sales tools, they're mm -hmm. reinforcement tools. So